So we're going to start the video there. Um, financial disclosures, I'm no dummy. I have ownership <laughs> shares in LensGen, which makes this lens. The Juvene is a dual optic IOL. It's curvature changing, <laughs> presbyopia correcting. I was the first surgeon to use this lens about five years ago in Panama. We've since done more than 100. I'm going back to Monterey, Mexico next week to do even more. So you all know how the normal eye works. This lens comes in two parts. Eric showed a little clip yesterday. I'll tell you a lot more detail today. There's the big base lens that fills the capsule bag. There's the front power lens or fluid filled lens. And it's curvature changing. We're not getting anterior posterior movement. The front lens actually has a curvature change. And that's what necessitates the huge uh, base lens. So standard cataract surgery, I make two pairs of TCs. Normally I don't do two pairs of TCs, but we're doing a bimanual IA just to get all the viscoelastic out. So here's our phaco incision. In this case, we're using a little larger incision. I do a phaco through a 2.8, but at the end we'll enlarge to 3.0. Do our normal rexus. These are my forceps that I uh, have marked off in two and a half and five millimeters so I can tell the size of the rexus. We're doing a standard rexus, about five millimeters, even five and a half. Very important with this lens, you're filling the capsule bag. You can't have a radialized rexus. You got to complete the rexus. You can use a femto, you can use a zepto, you can use forceps, whatever makes you happy. And there's the size, that's about five and a half millimeters. Here's the end of the case. Got to put the lens in, shown in real time. The lens has gone through almost 10 iterations, and this company was started on the back of a napkin 10 years ago. And so here comes the base lens going in the capsule bag, and you'll see it'll fill the capsule bag completely. It doesn't shoot out, it comes out very controlled, and we just deliver the entire thing in one motion, <coughs> goes right in the capsule bag, no more manipulation needed. Now the same injector is gonna be used to put in the front lens or the power lens. This can be a toric power as well, it's filled with a very stable fluid, a derivative of silicon oil that the retina guys used for many, many decades now. And so this lens goes in as well. There are three tabs. Let me explain the colors. The front lens has a yellow rim. The base lens has the blue. And the reason is so it makes it easier for us as surgeons to see when we've docked the front lens. The front lens has uh, uh, docking at three different tabs. So there's the front lens. Again, it's fluid filled. That's the power lens. You'd think that lens calcs are tougher, but they're actually easier, even though they're two lenses, because the effective lens position is so predictable. There's no <coughs> capsule bag shrinkage or shrink wrap effect, and shifting of the ELP doesn't happen here. So there you go, under all three tabs, that's all it takes. From here on out, just routine case, take out all the viscoelastic. And again, I'm doing a bimanual IA, whereas I normally don't, just so I can get all the viscoelastic out. Seal the incision, still sutureless and everything else is normal. So very, very straightforward for any uh, technically advanced surgeon like we have here in the audience. Again, here's the bimanual INA. You can't really go behind the IOL <coughs> to remove viscoelastic, so you have to do as best you can. That uh, base lens does have those windows or fenestration, so you can put the IA probe through those and get out most of the viscoelastic. Any little viscoelastic that remains is, of course, no big deal. That will be washed out uh, naturally. So here's another one just going to show you a little bit higher magnification. Again, the base lens goes in completely um, in one clean motion, very controlled, no pressure, does not shoot out of the injector. And again, the, we've done more than 100 eyes, looking to start FDA trials in 2020, have received a tremendous amount of funding for this already. And then the base lens again going on top. And so this video I'm showing you is a surgeon who's doing this. This, is, this one's not me, this is a surgeon who's doing it for the very first time. So this is the N equals one video. Certainly, you can do the same. It's not that difficult. So you put it in the eye here, and then we'll just couple it up. And then this one, in fact, has uh, toric lens markings, which you'll see. And so you can also have a toric correction if need be. And then this is tapped underneath those three tabs, and we'll go from there. Post-op routines, totally re regular, normal stuff. The antibiotic, steroid, NSAID. And you see those are the toric lens marks on the surface of the front lens. So everything looks great there. So what are the results you're asking? Is the, the lens, even our first generation from gosh, eight maybe years ago and implanted five years ago are doing relatively well. We are doing even better now in the latest iteration of this. So let me just uh, show you here. Obviously the vision is high quality, none of the effects of light splitting. And so these patients have totally normal contrast, no glare, no halos, et cetera. 
Again, lens calcs were very easy because the effective lens position of both optics is very predictable. And that's something we can do with our iowacalc.com. We also have, again, no ELP shift, no rotation, no PCO. We fill the caps or bag completely. One of the big surprises here was almost five years, 0% PCO, more than 100 patients. No shift in the ELP. 90% of patients are within a half diopter of target, which is you know, quite remarkable. Again, we're using that AI approach to doing our lens calcs, which is available to you as well. Here's the defocus curves. The blue line is the Juvene lens, and you can see it performs significantly better than an EDOF lens, and basically in the same frame as a multifocal, bifocal, trifocal type lens, but yet with less glare and halos, no light splitting. If you ask me in my crystal ball what's in the future, in 10 years, for sure, we're going to have mostly electric cars. In 10 years, for sure, we'll probably have self-driving cars. You know what? In the future, whether it's a year, five, or 10, you're going to have truly accommodating eye wells. Maybe this lens, maybe another lens, maybe both of them. You don't really know. But certainly, this is the method of the future. I think the comment that was made earlier that I, we're surprised that 20 years later, 30 years later, we're still splitting light holds true. So I think this lens does have a lot of potential benefits. It's not the only one in the space. I think it's great to have a lot of competitors in this one space, because I'm sure at least one, and hopefully multiple, will pan out and produce really good visual results. And so keep your eye out for this. Again, FDA trials starting in 2020. If you're experienced FDA trials and you're very interested, please email me, and we're happy to get you plugged in as a potential site. Any comments or questions? Actually, we have two questions for you, Uday, from the audience. I'll go ahead and read sure. them. Sure. Um, what is the specific mechanism by which the front lens changes shape when the patient accommodates? Great question. So we did a lot of research that we couldn't actually find ahead of time. One of which was, how do you determine what the baseline level of forces are on the capsule bag? So we had to get fresh cadaver eyes. We got little elastic rings that were C-shaped, put them in the capsule bag, and we could measure what's the baseline level. We could even do it in, you know, we, we measured a lot of things that we didn't know ahead of time. But the bottom line is you're still relying on ciliary muscle, and you're relying on some sort of accommodative forces, and you end up, that's why the base lens is so big to fill the capsule bag. And that's transmitted, and the way we've designed the lens, it amplifies what little movement is produced to increase the curvature. I think if we look at nature, the way we have accommodation in young people is increased lens curvature, not moving the lens front to back. And I think that's the way it's going to be. And so it's increasing with the curvature. There's actually a lot more detailed video on my teaching website. It's cataractcoach.com. 